we're going to get started. Um, it's 1030. Father God, we thank you for your graciousness, for your love, your kindness, and your mercy. We give you praise, glory, and honor for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for those that are, have joined this call, for those that are joining, and for those that could not join on today, had a desire to, but could not. God, we ask you to just continue to bless each of us, God, for for our faithfulness towards you, for our love towards you. We ask you, God, to just be with us in everything that we say and do. God, we give your name, the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, caller. Um, <clears throat> I am broadcasting from beautiful somewhere in Fort Myers, Florida right now, and um, it is the the weather's beautiful. It's 84 degrees. It's uh, it's a beautiful place to be. So we're we're headed back to New Jersey in a little while. So y'all pray for us as we travel the travel the airways to get back um, home. So today I'm gonna probably do somewhat of a, a quick Bible study um, just so I don't miss my flight. Um, I'm going to ask you to turn me to Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. Romans chapter 10, verse number 1. And the scripture reads, the first verse says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. Now, I know Paul was talking about Israel, but God is God's desire is that all of us, that the world be saved. All right. And how can the world be saved? The world can be saved because <clears throat> of us. The message that we preach, the testimony that we tell, the love that we have for God's people uh, to let them know about the goodness and the greatness of the Lord. You know, you have to imagine Paul is Paul is going around um planting churches in different areas as he is led by the Holy Spirit. And what is the purpose? The purpose is to gather people together, to give them the gospel, to tell them about the love of Christ, and that they accept him and become part of the, the royal family. Um, so that was his goal. That has to be our goal. Please keep in mind that that is not the preacher's responsibility. That is the believer's responsibility. Whether you're whether you have a title or not, whether you are a preacher in a pulpit or not, you can be a choir member and still win souls. You can be uh, an usher and still win souls. And so you may not be able to preach across a pulpit on a Sunday morning, but you do have the ability to speak. God's word to someone that comes across your path. So here's the thing. We get up in the morning and we say, God, create an opportunity for me to do ministry today. Create an opportunity for me to talk to someone about you. I think God loves that. I think God loves um the fact that we are willing vessels to do what he wants. And so God says, you know, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. My heart's desire and prayer for our people, for all people, is that they be saved, right? But it's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen by itself. Verse number two says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, meaning that they know of God, right? Everybody knows about God. Everybody knows they've heard about God. If they saw The Passion of the Christ or The Ten Commandments or one of these movies, everybody 
knows about God. There's probably not too many people that have never heard um, of the God we serve, right? So, um, but if they don't have it, if they don't know God according to knowledge, and that's why it's important for us not to just know who he is, but we have to know him for ourselves, who he is in our lives, what he means to us. And so if you had to define God, what would you say? You, you, you know, some people just say, well, he's the man that sits high and looks low, or he's the man in the, you know, in heaven or something like that. That's great. But I know him as a healer. I know him as a deliverer. I know him as a rewarder of them that that seek him. I know him as a savior. And so, yes, people know about God. Just like Job said, I thought I knew you, but now I know you because of the encounter and the experience that I've had with you. I know you at a different level. And so I think all of us that are on this call right now, all of us that are here today have had some type of encounter with God that we know him, right? That we know him um, on a different level, that we know more than the, more than the surface stuff that he's, he's uh, you know, he's in heaven or, or whatever, whatever people say, um, that really have never experienced him. And so when you have accurate knowledge, good morning, Barbara, good morning, Michelle. When you have accurate knowledge of God, you, um, you, know, you don't just have a zeal for God, but you, you know him. You know him in the spirit of unity and in the bond of peace. You know him in the word. You know him in your home. You know him in your finances. You know him in your in your health, you know him on your job, you know him, you know he has taken care of you, you know it was not your college degree that made it happen, or it wasn't your 800 credit score that made it happen, but it was God that made the things happen that could not have happened if there, if it was not for him. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. Um, verse number three, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. If you don't know who God is, you will begin to establish your own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So what is the, what is the definition of righteousness? And, and all it is very simply is being in a right relationship with God. That is to be righteous. Um, to be self-righteous, to be in a right relationship with yourself. you It's all about you. It's all about what you want. It's all about what you do. It's all about what you say. It's all about um, yourself. But when you know God, we, we um, yeah, we decrease, right? So that he can increase. Um, yeah, I kind of, I like that one. We decrease that he can increase that he gets the glory, that he is the all in all. And so when something great happens in your life or something something miraculous happens, you didn't say, well, you know, look what I did, right? You saying, well, God did it. If somebody says, um, man, that message was awesome today. I give all glory to him. Um, that was a, that was a, 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 you did an excellent job today on the job. I give all glory to God because if it had not been for God on my side, I would have failed. But because the power of the Holy Spirit resides in me, mm, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, right? So, I give everything to God. I owe everything to God. Everything belongs to him. I take no credit for anything. The fact that I am sitting here teaching right now, all the way in Florida, to God be the glory. And I give it all to him. Amen. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, 
bypass some of this and I'm going to go down to verse number 8 and in verse number 8 it says but what say it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach the word is in your mouth the power of life and death is in your tongue um, you have the ability through the power of the word right right what David said David said thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee and if you have God's word in your heart not just in your head so you can just quote scriptures that's nice and all but um, if you can never quote a scripture if you have the word in your heart right you will be more powerful than someone that has the word in their head um, and so again um, but he, what saith it the word is nigh thee the word is with you the word is in you it's in your mouth it's in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach you have it you have the word in you and I'm not just talking about words from a book I'm talking about the word of God who is Jesus Christ right his name is the word of God please remember that please remember that you know somebody says do you know the word you can say absolutely I know the word well can you quote a scripture no nope. can't then how do you know the word well I know him um, I know him for myself because he is the word not words on a book but he is the word and the more I know the word him the word the more powerful I will become in the word I hope that makes sense um, verse number nine that if you confess with your mouth and I and and I believe those of us that are on this call have done this, but this is for those that you communicate with um, that don't know him, right? That if they confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Can I say that one more time? That if they confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it's confession and belief. Belief in what? Belief in something that is humanly, right, impossible. I can confess that he rose again, right, even though I wasn't there to see it. I can confess with my mouth and I can believe in my heart that God hath raised Christ from the dead then I will be saved so that is the process that we follow with unbelievers it's not mm, God help me it's not yelling and screaming and hollering at the altar it's not five pounds of oil rubbed all over somebody's forehead it's not repeat these words after me it's it's bigger than that it's more than that hey brother ag i see you melissa god bless y'all um it's it's bigger than that and it's not as wild as that god bless you pastor kevin um it doesn't have to be a wild experience. It doesn't have to be a scream fest or a run, you know, a track meet where people are running around and acting crazy. That's not the God we serve. We can look how easy this is. This can happen in Starbucks. Ha! Huh. This can happen in the supermarket. It can happen in the parking lot of uh, Home Depot. It can happen anywhere. It can happen over the phone. 
right? It doesn't require the person to have to scream. I think this is what, f what people are afraid of. They're afraid that if that in order to be saved, I, I have to I have to do all these antics that I see done in the church, and the uh, the answer to that is no. God doesn't require you to do calisthenics and bat flips and run all over the place. He requires us to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Christ that God raised Christ from the dead. That's what he's asking us to do. So, um, moving on, verse number 10. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And so, it, the process is simple, you know. And, again, it is, it is the process. It's the beginning of the process of development. We want to win the soul. We want to win the human. We want to win that person to Christ because what is happening in the spirit realm is that the enemy is trying to destroy that life before, before we can have an opportunity to save that life, right? Our goal is to save lives. Ah, I love it. Our goal, our responsibility is to save lives, right? We ain't running into no burning buildings. We're not, you know, doing anything other than just telling them about the goodness and the greatness of the Lord. Tell them your testimony. What changed in your life? You don't need, you don't need books. You don't need magazines. You don't need watchtowers. You don't need anything. You don't even need a Bible. All you have to do is know this. And someone's life can be changed. Now, from there, there's more work to be done, right? You have to you have to teach them to you have to teach them to know the kingdom of God. You have to teach them, you know, the principles of prayer and fasting and giving and, and all of those things that come along with it. You know, you don't get saved like they do on TV. You don't get saved on Friday and on Monday you teaching and preaching online. No, you're not you're not making movies and then you turn around and laying hands on people and it doesn't work like that. This is a development process, right? And so um, verse number 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So this, this scripture is saying that we have the Jews and we have the Greeks, which is really the Gentiles, um, that there is no difference in, in the eyes of God. All people deserve the opportunity to be, to, to be um, delivered. All people, not just Jews, not just, and, and the Gentiles are included. Um, I'm not going to go into where we fit in, not today. Um, but y'all, y'all remember those, um, but it is access given, access is granted to everyone. Let me keep going. I got to be done in a few minutes. Um, for whosoever, doesn't matter who, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever doesn't matter who as long as you call upon the name of the Lord you will be saved Jew Gentile God bless your sister Pam uh, all of these um, verse number 14 how then and this is very important this is this is I, I just wanted to get to this before um, 11 verse number 14 how then shall they call upon him? who they have not believed. So how can you call upon somebody that you never believed in? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So if you read that scripture backwards, you need a preacher so that the person can now have say they have heard of him and then believe in him. 
So there is the need for someone, you know, let's let's we let's not well, let's lose the let's use the term preacher a little looser, right? Because a preacher is not the guy with the collar. It's not somebody with a title. It's not the person that sits in the pulpit. A preacher is someone that is delivering God's word. Oops. Period. Sorry about that, y'all. A preacher is someone that is going to deliver God's word. As long as if a child is given the word of God, he or she is the preacher. If an elderly man or woman doesn't matter who it is. God can use anybody, not just somebody in a seat that sits high and looks low. I hope you're following me. And so how can an unbeliever hear if you and I don't exist? So therefore, God needs you and he needs me to go to the person that has never heard of God in order for them to believe in him. I hope that makes sense. Mm. Look at verse number 15. And how shall they preach? Right? How can the preacher preach if he has not been sent, except he be except they be sent? And as, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, he said, and he being Christ, said, go into the world and preach the gospel to who? To every creature, right? He, he didn't. He didn't minimize that to a certain group of people or someone, a certain person that has a certain degree or somebody that went to Bible school or somebody went to college or any of those things. Go into the world and preach the good news of the kingdom of God. And so, and I'm going to read that again. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Okay. Good news. You've been sent. I've been sent. What does sent mean? Sent means that you have been sent to this place, to this earth realm. No matter where you are positioned, right, on this earth, some of y'all, I know my sister's in East Orange. I know some of y'all in Trenton. Um, wherever you are, Ben is in Trenton. Wherever you are, that is your place that God has positioned you where, when he sent you, right? That's where you are now. Here I am. I'm positioned in a hotel room in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm sorry, Fort, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, Florida. And I am preaching the gospel, right? I'm giving a message from here. This is today. Wednesday, I'll be in Jersey. And so God is using us. So he sent you here. You have been sent here. Now, this has nothing to do with well, who's called and who's not called and who is chosen and who. No, this has to do with being sent. You were sent here to this earth realm to deliver a message that you didn't even know about until you heard it from the preacher. Right? Somebody else that came from the same place that you did. And I did. They come from nowhere different. They came from the same place you come you came from. And so therefore, the cycle will continue. Yeah. Now that you got it, now you can give it to the per next person who will then give it to somebody else. Hmm. Yeah, I love this. Um, verse number 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For 
Esaias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Some haven't done what they were supposed to do. Someone, some people think, because this is what society has given us, right? Some people think, well, it ain't my job. I'm not, I'm not no, I'm not no minister. I'm not no deacon. I'm not no elder or pastor. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. They, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, right? So then faith, right, cometh by hearing. So that unbeliever, before he can believe, he must hear. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So I have to hear the word of God, right, to develop faith. And I hear the word of God from who? From the preacher. I think I'm going to stop there. I, I, I hope that I hope that makes sense. It is our responsibility. It is all of us. It is incumbent upon all of us to speak to someone about God's love. To um preach the good news of the kingdom and tell people everywhere about the love of God that they may have what you have you have been given a gift your gift is eternal life and you're literally just going back home to where you came from but that's a gift So don't you want other people to have that same thing? Mm -hmm. To have that same access? All you got to do is tell them. Tell them your testimony. Amen. Tell them your testimony of what God has done for you. Tell them how great God is. Tell them the beauty of the kingdom. Tell them anything you want to tell them. Tell them. Right? I pray everybody has a blessed rest of the day. Yo, play for, pray for us as we travel. We go on the wheels up, take the wheels up, and we'll be back home this afternoon. Um, God bless you all. Love you much. Father God, we thank you once again for this blessing that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, God, for entrusting in us the ability to win souls and to change lives. And so, God, we take this very seriously and we don't take it for granted. So, God, I pray that you continue to position us to where we may use our gifting and we may speak what thus saith the Lord to win souls. God, we know everyone doesn't know you the way we know you. We know everyone doesn't have the experiences that we have had and understand how we were delivered. But God, I pray that you use us. For those of us that want to be used, God, I pray that you use us. Use us for your glory. Use us for your purpose. God, we love you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now remember, you, you may only witness to one person. You may have one assignment. And you carry that assignment for the rest of your life. You may be responsible for winning thousands of souls. It's not up to you and it's not up to me. It's up to God. To whom much is given, much is required. And so I'm honored if I only win one soul. I'm honored that God used me to that one. And I'm also honored to win a thousand souls. As long as God is pleased with what I'm doing. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. We'll talk soon. God bless.